in the history of God's work with his people. The principle is to seek the Lord in purity, is to be renewed by the word, by the Lord, with joy and success in worship. And our application is to, dic uh, to dictate ourselves, de uh, sorry, to dedicate ourselves to be servants of the Lord and to respect our leaders. And the scripture says coming from Ezra 6, 13 through 22. And we're going to read that. I guess I'll read the 13, you read the 14, and we'll go like that. We'll all read the 22nd verse together. Then Tatnai, governor of the side of the river, Shetnar Bonai, and their companies, according to them, to that which Darius the king has sent, so they did speedily. And they build and finish it according to the commandment of God and according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius, Xerxes, Prisons of. And this house was finished on the third day of the month of Adar, which was in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. And offered at the dedication of the house of God a hundred bullocks, two hundred rams, four hundred lambs, and for a sin offering for all Israel, twelve he goats, according to the number of tribes of Israel. And the children of the captivity kept the Passover upon the fourteenth day of the first month. Peace and the Levites were purified. Kill the Passover for all the children of God and for their brethren, priests, and for themselves. And the children of Israel, which was come again out of captivity, and all such as separated themselves unto them from the filthiest from the filthiness of the heathen of the land, to seek the Lord God of Israel, did eat and all, and kept the feast of the unleavened bread seven days with joy. For the Lord had made them joyful and turned the heart of the king of Assyria unto them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God. To discover the influence of faithful leaders in the history of God's work with his people. One, one thing we got to look at first is that as we get into the lesson, there's one thing I wanted to bring out. It says how God's people work together to rebuild the temple. How God's people work together to rebuild the temple. And if you look at the first couple of verses, God's plan, you've you got to look at God's plan. And when you fall in God's word, his plan works. So what I'm saying, if, if if you have godly leaders and they are following God's plan, and the people themselves will be united. We don't have to call a revival to have unity. The word of God will bring unity because it says it'll separate. And you know, a lot of times, if you don't like confrontation, you think because less people in the place, nobody's coming. But remember, everybody has free will. And I always look at that. You have a free will. So in order to be here, you got to want to come here. So that's, that's the thing. It's better to work with a few committed people. Fill in the Spirit. Remember that, that's, that was Acts, right? It says, find those that are full of the Spirit, right? And allow them to do it. And if you look in the Old Testament, it says, um, I think it was one of the priests says, um, bring, let, let us get money so we can do something. And they had so much money that they had to tell them to stop bringing money. See, that, that it tells you when you get a committed heart, full of the Spirit, that's what can happen. Because God is the one that does the multiplying. All we have to do is do what he tells us to do. Even in, and I know it's jumping, but even in, um, in John's gospel, it, you know, it says, when it says, well, what about John? You know, and God said, no, 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 don't worry about nobody. Worry about what I tell you to do. If you do what I tell you to do, and everybody do what I tell you to do, things are going to be, be fine. It says then the governor, and, and if, you, if you read ahead of it, 
earlier, and that's where we come in here. What happened is, and I can just tell you real fast, is that at one time, they were supposed to build, build everything, build a temple, build the city of Jerusalem, and build a wall. But for some reason, when the temple was finished, and I guess government changed, you know, the people put pressure on the Jews to not, not to build. And so what I always look at it is a providential will of God. No matter how bad something is, or looks, or seems, the circumstance that you're in, it might be bleak. But that's when God really show up. You know the old people always say, God don't show up what? When you want him. Right? He show up when what? All, all the time. So that, that's what you got to look at. So the bleak it get, as born again believers, we, we should be jumping for joy. Why? Because we know our, our, our maker is coming. We know that the things that he's about to do is going to be done because all he wants is committed people. And like it says, the road that, that God is talking about, it says few are going to be on it. When you see a carnival going down the road, that's not where he is. When you see something is packed, that's not where he is. Because people like company. People like people. People like to be in their own mess. People like what, what, what um, Charles Stanley said, people like to, for you to be in their pee party. Right? But if you, if you remember how God operates, he said he had 12 people, and he was God. He had 12, and even one of them was predestined to do what he did. But he still had his free will because he said, go and do it quickly. He could always say, well, you know, I don't want to do that. Anyway, it says, the elders of the Jews build it, and they prospered through the prophet Sinai, Haggai and the prophet Zechariah, the son of Edo. And they build and finish it according to the commandments of God of Israel, and according to the commandment of Osiris, Darius, and Xerxes, king of King of Persia. And that's what you've got to understand. Once you do what God tells you to do, he'll move everything else. You know, it, it says the rocks will cry out. Right? That means he'll use believers or unbelievers to do his will. And once we understand that, we shouldn't be fearful. We should just do what he tells us. Because he always tells us what we can. We, we never see the end. We always see where we are. And I always tell people, two, three things you've got to remember. God is a present God, is a personal God, number one. So when he gives you a word, if he don't say go tell somebody, it's for you. Right? And then he, he's specific in what he says. And then the last thing is that he, he always wants you to go and meet. You know, because, like, for instance, all throughout the Bible you look, you're going to see somebody say, well, God sent me. And he said, well, I can't go. I want somebody else to go with me, right? And so that's what he always do. He, he places people in your life for a reason. And the problem is that we have to be able to discern that. Because everybody in your company is not good for you, right? Because we see what happened when, when they were building the temple. The people come and say, well, why are you doing this? And why are you doing this? And what I like about it, a little down in like the fourth of um, the 16th or 17th verses, it talks about they went to the, wrote a letter to the, to the, to the, um, to the um, what is it, to the, the leader of, of the Persian, the king of Persia, and they actually tell him to check the records. And that's, that's why I always say, check the records. So when you hear it say, check the records, well, if you don't know what a record says, you're going to be kind of fearful. But that's God who's saying, check the records. Because he's using, so when they check the records, they actually came up with something that the first king missed. Because at one time he said, stop, tell them, stop the building. Right? Stop building. But then when the second king was there, which is Darius, it says he checked the records and he checked all the records and found out that the king prior, uh, king prior before him actually said that this must continue. And what, well, let, me, let me, since I'm here, let me just go quickly to what he says. He adds something to it too. He didn't just say, let him continue. He says, I think, where it is. He says, if any person hamper the building, He's going to take a stake out of their house and stake them on it. And remember, it doesn't say that Zarius was a believer. He didn't, you know, it's just like Nebuchadnezzar. We know Nebuchadnezzar went and, and, and messed up um, Jerusalem because why? Because the Jews didn't fall in what God said. And that's what he always does. Anyway, look at the 15th verse. And this house was finished on the third day of the month, which was the sixth year of Darius the king. It says, and the children of Israel, the priests and the Levites and the rest of the children of the captivity kept the dedication of the house of God. And what you've got to realize is that when God allows you to do something, 
he makes sure the people that celebrate are the people who did it. Because you know, a lot of people like parties, but they don't like prepare for the party. You know what I'm saying? They want to come after the party is set up, right? But they don't want to come, or, or even when the party is over, you don't see them to clean up, right? So the same, same thing is happening here, you know? And so we can, we can look, and I always said we can look at, at what's going on with our lives right now, because, you know, I, I can say, you know, since I've been in America, and I've been here almost 40 years, probably 41 off and on, but 40 years, 39, 40 years. And I can tell you things have gotten worse. Because from when my oldest son was in school to now, it's gotten really worse, right? And then I don't know, let me, let me since I'm saying this, I, 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 I'm a minister, so I just share stuff. Um, Friday, something happened in America that I don't know if a lot of people saw. And I think it's a personal thing, it's a providential, something about God. For 48 years, think about this. Unborn children being died, dead, in the name of whatever you think it is. Because somebody believed that and somebody don't believe that's fine. It's the same thing. America was formed with people who had slaves. People didn't care about slaves. And people, you know, but it, it just formed that way, right? So I always tell people, Christians, we are walking this earth in a place that God says we need to be here. And the only reason why we're here is for people to see our lives. That even in a sinful world, we can show that God is coming and God is in us. That's all we got to do. Don't beat nobody over the head. You know, don't run nobody and tell them that they got to, you know, you don't have to do that. Let a word do that itself. So Saturday, Friday, something happened, and, and everybody, Roe v. Wade. I remember in high school I read about Roe v. Wade, right? And I didn't know really what it was. Because you remember, I'm from South America. But since I've been here, I read up stuff. I read up stuff. And I always ask people, I said, do you think God is pleased with America? I don't care what side of the aisle you are. Do you think God is pleased for killing human beings? And that's, a, that's the only thing I ask people. I said, think about it. Think, really think about it. So if he says the widows and orphans we're supposed to take care of, and we are putting our old people in, away from the home that they're brought up or whatever, and we're killing our children before they're born, it's almost the same thing happening here. Because some of them were giving their children you know that? They're, they're worshiping God, of not the Bible says, for 70 years God allowed them to be in a place that they couldn't even worship him. And think about America, we are still free enough to come to church every Sunday, right? This place should be packed because things are happening. Gas has gone out of the roof, you know, and, and we're not blaming a specific person, but I'm saying when, when the majority start goes the wrong way, God has to do something. He has to do something. It says, pray for your leaders so that what? While you're here, it, 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 you know, you, you'll be able to do what we're doing right now because some, like, like Pope Pastor said, some countries can't do what we're doing. They got to hide and do that. Right? So we're, 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 we're still, like I said, we're still there. We're still, we're still, there's still a little light in it. The 17th person, and offer the dedication of this house of God, 100 bullocks, 200 bullocks. If you read that and you read in the old, it, before it says when it built the first temple, it was so much more. It says the old people were crying because the things that they were seeing, it was not as good as the first temple. But if you look at time-wise, it says Solomon Temple is only 400 years, but it says the temple that was mixed, maybe have, have the Jews and the Gentiles mixed in, right? It was, four, it was 585 years. So I, I always say, you know, what, you know people ask, well, why... Why good things have to, why bad things happen to good people? You know, or why is it happening to me? Instead of saying, why not? You know, we live here. Anyway, and they set a priest in their divisions and Levites in their courses for the service of God, which is in Jerusalem and is written in the book of Moses. And if you see that and you go back and read the history, it's going to tell you David is the one that set it up. All how the priests and kings supposedly. But the, they're falling now. They're going. Remember, once you return back to God, you got to do what he says, not what you feel like he says. Because then it's not returning. You can't, you can't return halfway. You know, if you're a single mom, you know, and, and you have children, and, and for some reason you think that you have to have a man in the house that is not married because he's supplying your needs, 
You know what I'm saying? So when you come to church, where do you think your prayers are going? And I'm just saying that. Or a dad who's married and have a mistress. And you might think, well, why is he saying that? Because that's what's happening. That's why the church is empty. Because the world is seeing the church doing the same thing that they're doing. And I remember when I was in the world, I wouldn't come to church. Because the girls, I, I got I to gotta, I gotta buy everything for them. Whereas the girls in the street, you just give them, you know. And that's what you got to understand. We need to come back to God fully. Not, not half-stepping. And that's what he wants. It says, for the dung, it says, um, and the children which were come again of the captive and all such has separated himself unto them from the filthiness of the heat in the land to seek the Lord did eat. Can't participate in God's supper with, with, a, with an impure heart or hands that are not dirty. Remember even with David who the Bible says a man over God, God a man after God's own heart. God said you don't build the temple because why? You have blood in your hand. Think about that. And David was a man after God's own heart. David knew how to repent. David knew who to repent to. He didn't care what has happened. He said, if I go to God, I know God has mercy. You know, so that, that's some things that we, we need to pick up. And going back on there, was it the 15, uh, yeah, let me go to the 21st verse. And the children of Israel, which was, yeah, I read that, which has come again as such as the hand separated himself unto them from the fifth filthiness of the heathen of the land, to seek the Lord of Israel, did he? And they said, Keep the feast of the unleavened bread seven days with joy, for the Lord had made them joyful, and turned the hands of the king of Assyria unto them, to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God and the God of Israel. There are some things that I mark off here. Look at this. It is to their great credit that they use their freedom of time and resources to honor the Lord. We retire, and we say, Now we can do what we want. See, God didn't make us retire so that we could do what we want. He made us retire to at least in our family to know who he is. Right? And your friends that you still have, make sure you keep telling them if they're not walking upright. But you can't beat them over the head. Remember? Because you got to think of how long it took you to get where you are in Christ. And so that's the only thing he says. So a lot of times I tell people, and I know some people don't like you tell them stuff. They know. What I always say, your friends know if you're walking right. Because when they get in trouble, who they call? They don't call their buddies, they call you. Right? The other thing I, wanted, I, I put up here is, um, the other thing I, I put up here says, but the regional pers uh, position officials soon intervene asking by, the author by which authority? And that's what they always say. They always ask you something. And the Bible says you should always have an answer for the hope that lies within, right? It says that. So you know, you know people are going to ask you, so why, you know, why, why we don't answer? Why we don't answer? I know, I know some of my friends. I have to actually see, ask my friends if they go to church. If they go to church, that's why I ask people. When I meet them and we talk, and I say, I say, do you go to church? Hey, man, I did that. I used to do that. Or, or somebody will tell you, so if they don't want to talk to you, they'll say, I'm an atheist. And I, I like when somebody says atheist because you got to know what an atheist is. You gotta act, you gotta know something, reject it to become an atheist. So if I'm learning God, then I can I can actually hang with you for a little while. So what you reject, I wanna know. And most of them will find, oh well, you know, they, they change where it's not, not an atheist anymore. But anyway, but the real key to the completion of their project was that it was according to the commandments of God of Israel. And that's what everything falls back to. You want a good marriage? Here's, here's a little thing it says. Husband, love your wife. It don't give you no other condition. It says just love your wife. And you know for the woman what it says? Obey your own husband. Now listen to mama or daddy or whatever. Obey your own husband. And then what it says for the children? Honor your parents. See, we add a lot of stuff into it, so that's why we get problems. Oh, well, she didn't cook good... You know, there is a question as to why Arxerxes' name appear here with the other two. For he did not rule until after the temple was completed. But his name is in there because if you look at the history, he was the one that sent, um, I think, is Nehemiah to do the wall. 
Because remember, there was a temple, there was a, the altar, and then the temple was built, and then the wall was finished. It's going to be the same time. So I think that's why he, one, his name is there. Um, in, how much time I have, Joe? Six minutes? Okay. Why do you think the dedication of this temple was kept with great joy? Anytime you're doing God's work, or if you're, you have an assignment of God and it's completed, that's what happens. You don't have to, you don't have to conjure it up to be happy. Because happy really is, a, is, is based on circumstances. If you win the lottery, you'll be happy. If all your money <laughs> that you win, you lose, you're going to be dumb unhappy. So it changes the time, right? But joy is, is something from within. It's, it's actually given by, joy, by God. And, and the last thing here I want to point out is we do not know how regularly the Jews have observed this feast over the centuries. The Passover re- recorded was those associated with, dedicate, uh, with dedicated events, including their rededication of the temple. One thing seems certain, the Passover had not been observed during the captivity. Probably because they were in, you know, in, in a different land, and those people were pagans, and they don't allow you to do so. See, even in America, you can do what you want to do within the law. And I think that's where a lot of us kind of like compromise. You know, well, I'm grown, and, you know, I got enough money. I don't need anybody. But if you say that with the same word and say you don't need God, then you know something is wrong with you, right? The reason the Passover could be observed at the proper time was that the priests and the Levites purified themselves. All of them were pure. Remember, we don't, we don't, you know, it, it's not, we don't relate it as, as much as when we are coming into the house of God. Because, you know, it's, it's a building and it's a church and we, we, we're born again and we're filled with the Spirit and all that stuff. But we still should reverence where we're coming. We still should reverence where we're coming. Um, I remember as a teenager, if I didn't go to confession, because I grew up Catholic, if I didn't go to confession, I couldn't go to church Sunday. Or I couldn't participate on the altar on Sunday. And you know, a lot of people, oh, well, yeah, but remember, at the time I didn't know what I was doing. So I was doing that. But as I could say, when, you, when, you, when, you, when I was once a child, I did the things like a child, right? When I became a man, I put away childish things. Then I always put away, I dump a lot of stuff to church, and I've been my own way, almost like a prodigal son. But thank God I'm here standing, talking to you. Right? Because only God knows who's going to be saved. And all of us don't have that chance. So that's why the younger people, when I keep telling them, I say, you know, I'm six or six years old. You don't know if you can make it to 60. I always tell my wife, well, you know, we, we talk about it. I said, I don't know if my grandchildren are going to be my age before Christ comes back. So the issue is that we got we to gotta really tell them because they're not getting it from the school. And when they go to university, they come back as rebels. They'll fight you. Anyway. The Levites killed the Passover lambs for the return of the exiles and the priests sprinkled the blood. And the only thing I wanted to say is sin causes death. And you remember it says, in the New Testament, it says it starts and it goes down. It gets worse until something intervenes, right? It, it gets worse. Seventy years of the Jews did not worship God as a nation. And sin also separates you from God. And in closing, I got, just want to read these things. It says, our, our great God uses both believers and unbelievers to do his will. Joy is a, pros- is a proper response of God's people when they recognize his blessing. Sacrifice and offerings are always a part of true worship. Can I get a blessing without sacrifice? Right? And, and I look at it this way. A lot of times we are blessed because of what, God, what Christ did. But that is what? That is salvation. I look at it like this. There's a process after salvation that we have something to do with. We have something to do with. Any work of God should be carefully organized and biblically founded. Everything we do should be based in the Word. 
The true worship is concerned about spiritual purity, and that, that's something that, um, that, that I think we're going to be held more accountable than even the people in the past because we ha they had it, the Holy Spirit on them. We have the Holy Spirit in us. We're on this other side of the cross. You know what I'm saying? So, so it like says, to who much is given, much is required. So we're going to be held a lot of time. That's why it says, don't, don't, don't be a teacher. Because when you're a teacher, you're reading first before you tell somebody something. Right? And then the last thing here, it says, all are always welcome to celebrate the fullness of God. All. Why? Because of the cross. If you, if, you read a script, if you read a lesson, it says that the priests and the people who, who, who purified themselves, those are the only people that were, could have done something. And I think the priest alone was done in the altar. But now it says, all are always welcome to celebrate the faithfulness of God because of Christ. Remember John 3, 16? For God said what? Love the whole world. And he gave the whole world a free choice, a free freedom of will, free will to do what? To accept by faith, right? Faith comes from hearing the word of God. And that's how we operate. So all you got to do is tell them. And then remember how long it took you to get where you are when you think that they are not listening. Okay? And so um, I just want to close in, in a little prayer here. Father God, we thank you all again for a lesson. And the lesson says godly leaders. Father God, to, to, for godly leaders to pre perform their duty, Father God, we also have to be committed. And not only committed, but born again, Father God. We know that the church is, is a place where people come, Father God, for different reasons, but we pray as they come, Father God, they, they see Christ in us, every one of us that is here, Father God, so that they'll either return and, or they'll come up and say that, what shall I do to be saved? And we'll have an answer, Father God. These are not a blessing we ask in Jesus' name.